So now, Crazy Hill Production is off the ground. You guys start out with party. You are, and what I love about you and where we're kindred spirits, you're a serial entrepreneur. That, you know, just like me, I started out doing parties. I thought that I wanted to be the biggest party and a pr promoter in the world, but my eureka moment came, had nothing to do with parties. Mm -hmm. It was really my first introduction to being an entrepreneur. That's what I love so much about throwing parties. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was the nightlife. It really wasn't. It was going out there, hiring people and, you know, making the my process, own income. Yeah. What, was, was that your first introduction to being an entrepreneur? Um, it was. I mean, it definitely was. But for me, it was all about marketing and branding. That's what my focus was. It wasn't so much about how do I make money. It was just like I felt that I needed to, to get seen and I needed the brand to get out there because I saw the long-term vision was that that's what's going to carry us. Mm -hmm. Once we get notoriety, once people know who we are, then we can move in, in a bunch of different directions because then we, you know, people know us, you know, we're, we're a name brand and people are going to, okay, they want to hire us for whatever different things that we're, we're offering that we can do. And that's what, what it was, the parties, the mixtapes, like I can go on and on. Like the drive was constantly marketing the brand, you know, Let's my talk brand. about that brand for yeah. a second. Crazy Hood Productions, mm -hmm. where'd it come from? So it was high school, it was the last week of high school or something like that. And, and I was like, all right, I want to think of a name for my company. And so the word crazy is because I honestly, I've, I've always felt a little bit off kilt mentally, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like as a kid, mainly, you know, like, you know, I, whatever, growing pains, you know, the, didn't have dad in the house, like just the, just normal kid shit. And, and I just felt like, yeah, I was a little bit off kilt. So I'm like, oh, I'm a little crazy. Maybe, you know, I'm a little crazy. And then hood is, people think it's neighborhood, but it's in school, you know, even though Miami's hot, uh, Miami schools, we have AC pumping. So we go six in the morning and the, and the hip hop attire for, for kids at that time was hoodies. So all the hip hop kids had hoodies in school because it was cold as hell in school. So we're all rocking champion hoodies. So we, we would call ourselves hoods, you know, so we were crazy hoods. And then I had a production because I wanted to sound professional when I spoke to people and we're a production company. So it's crazy hood productions. Real nice. Crazy hood. And I just want to sound professional. So I'm going to just yeah. throw production in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> now you, like you said, and, and, and I know we glossed over it, but I think it's important to your story and it's important for anybody who wants to become an entrepreneur out there and anybody who wants long-term success. You got your crazy hood production. You're throwing parties. Eventually, mm -hmm. at some point, you start DJing. You're mm -hmm. doing these mixtapes. Yep. And you have this amazing marketing and promotion company that you started that has worked for, you know, you and I have worked together for <laughs> many, many years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you were my marketing arm in Miami. All right. Can we go back just a little bit and touch on the mix. I just want to, I want to follow your evolution because people think this is easy. People think it happens overnight. People right. think that when they see somebody like yourself, a DJ EFN who is now a household name, he just came out of nowhere. It, right. it just happened for him. It was easy. Can right. we focus just on the journey of the mixtapes, the DJing, coming out of that, the marketing company, you spoke about the marketing and branding early. Like, let's, let's talk about your journey for a second. So, you know, I, I always wanted to be a DJ for sure. That's what I gravitate towards in hip hop, you know, was just always seeing the DJ. It's just, it called me, you know, and, and Jazzy Jeff, uh, Terminator X, Dre. Um, I mean, I can go on and on with, with DJs that, that, that inspired me. So when I finally was able to get turntables, I started to do mixtapes. And, and what it was is I, I started looking around to the DJs in my city. And I'm like, what void can I fill in my city? What can I do here and represent the city? And I saw, you know, at this time, Cal is now in Miami. He's, he's killing it on Mix 96 on, on the radio. We got DJ Epps killing it in the clubs at the time. And we got other guys mainly doing clubs and, and underground radio but nobody was really going heavy on the mixtapes. And we're getting all these mixtapes from New York 
And we love those mixtapes, but those mixtapes don't represent us in terms of like, we want all the same music, but what do I get out of hearing shout out to Brooklyn and Queens when I live in Miami? You know, like <laughs> I wanted something to, to represent us and also have some of our artists represented. Because remember, at that time, commercial radio isn't playing hip hop yet. So there's not many outlets for our local artists to be on. So I said, all right, I'm going to do mixtapes. And I'm going to try to do the same quality that these other mixtapes DJs are doing out of New York and in L.A. I want to give the same quality. So, so if you had a choice and you're looking, it looks the same. It just happens to be from your city. And, and that's what I did. And, and, I, and I used to drive. I, I sometimes forget this, but me and my boys used to just jump in my car with just enough money for gas. And I used to drive up the East Coast to buy records because in order to compete with those mixtapes, I needed to have records either at the same time that they were putting them on their mixtapes or damn near around the same time. Right. So that's the only way I could go and find white labels was by traveling. You know, I wasn't getting serviced yet by the record labels. And that wasn't even like maybe even a thing yet. It was just about to, it was starting around that time. So I drove up the East Coast all the way to New York, stopping at different record stores, buying records come back down, and by the time I got here, those records weren't out yet, put them on my mixtape, and it's at least around the same time that those mixtapes are getting down here with those same records. So now you have a choice, and it's the same quality, damn near the same exclusives, and, and, but I'm repping the city. And then that's how that whole mixtape journey started. Yo, you're dropping so many gems, and I want to highlight, because you're talking, and I don't want to gloss over this good <laughs> stuff. Number one, you said, you're looking at the game. You're a DJ. You love it. You, you always knew you wanted to be a DJ. You always knew you wanted to get into that space. Right. But I can't just jump in this space. I have to look for an opening. I right. have to be clear. Where's the white space? Where's the void? Where right. is a place that I can fit in? I'm still DJing. I'm still right. doing what I love. But what is going to be my lane? How do I separate myself? You see, Cali who's going on to become a, a, a household name. At that time, he was on Mix 96. You see people like Epps, who's a legend mm -hmm. in Miami, killed the club scene for years. Mm -hmm. And you're like, they have those other two avenues. Bingo, I got it. Nobody locally is no, killing the mixtape scene. That's where I'm going to fit in. So I love that. And then the second thing, which I didn't know, you just said I used to drive up to the East Coast. Yeah, all the road to the East Coast, yep. Driving from Miami to New York, that ain't going from the Bronx to Brooklyn. No, no. That's not going down the block. So your yeah. level of commitment to your craft, your level of commitment to I need to do what it takes to stand out and win, that's 24 hours up and that's 24 hours back. Yep. These are the things that people need to do to be successful. And I say it all the time. There's a price to pay to success. Are you willing to pay it? The right. sacrifice of taking your last money, putting it into gas, driving 24 hours up, 24 hours back, no sleep, having to rush once you get these records, put it out so that your mixtapes are not old. Yep. You were willing to pay the price. I love that story. I love that story. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.